Let's talk about the time I introduced a product owner role and made things worse for a couple of team as opposed to leaving it as it was functioning pretty well. We had a stakeholder, we had a business analyst. These two roles kind of made up the product owner role, okay, across these two teams. The stakeholder was doing the outward part, planning a little further than our nose, the strategic planning, who handled the client relationship management in terms of managing expectations, schmoozing clients, understanding how to speak to clients, creating the right perception for the product, talking about how what we create provides a certain return on investment. Then we had the business analyst more concerned about short-term planning. This is the internal part. Someone who works very closely with the team, along to like the events, the sprint planning meetings, some daily scrums. They know how scrum works. They know how to interact with the team. They've got the camaraderie down. They know how to slice and dice work in a certain way with the team, which is complementary to iterative development, to accelerate learning. But there are some cons as well. Sometimes, the business analyst did not have the gravitas to make decisions on some of the things that we were learning on the requirements. So there was a delay, there was a longer feedback loop. i add to that, sometimes a collection of the things that we had delivered did not chime with what the business analyst thought we wanted and what the stakeholder wanted. Whereby we were like, look, we can see some of the opportunities to improve and somehow, some way, we had the stakeholder now begin to handle the internal part of the role. One person owns the decision making, make sure we build the thing right, Let, let's do this. So the business analyst was then sort of sucked back in into the business analyst pool as a function for this company. But here's the trouble. What seemed like a good idea turned into a really big problem because now we had a stakeholder who had the domain knowledge, who understand what they wanted, had a decision making power, but their availability was not happening. Even though they said they'd be available, even though they said they had an interest in working with the Scrum framework, even though they said they wanted to get closer to the team to create that interactive camaraderie, make sure tacit knowledge doesn't go missing, actually it didn't happen. So we ended up in a situation whereby, yes, we collapsed two roles into one with a hypothesis of one role being more effective, but the behaviors were not in place. Now you could say, well, that's just a problem with somebody's behaviors. The outward role for this stakeholder was huge. The level of responsibilities was a lot. Now, they were not able to truly commit to the inward responsibilities and the outward responsibility. So why are we trying to shoehorn the product owner role into a situation, into a dynamic whereby the person does not have the capacity to do it? They don't have the desire to try and make it work. But the impact then really turned into a lot of tension. It had the reverse effect of the camaraderie and the interactive part. In fact, we saw the stakeholder less and the team began to feel a little bit annoyed that they were never around. And then eventually we had to revert back into bringing in another business analyst. They had to up their knowledge and they had to, you know, engage and, you know, go through the whole Tuckman cycle with the team again and, and start from the top. What appears to be a good idea of crushing roles and bringing them into one and saying, we're going to create more accountability, one single source of truth for decision making, faster feedback loops. It's not always the way. I would strongly recommend before you do this, you think about the pros and the cons and you see that if the people who are going to step into these new roles, is their knowledge in that domain? What is their knowledge in that framework they're going to be using? And also more than that, is their desire to make these changes? And what may sound good on paper, when you play out the behavior of being available, it means you've got to be around for the sprint planning meeting, or you've got to be around for the refinement, or you've got to be around sometimes in a week to validate requirements on the fly. Do those behaviors really chime with what you're willing to do? If they don't, think twice. Okay, thanks for watching. Please do like and subscribe. Until next time.